If it's one thing I enjoy doing, it's top fragging against all the little twinks that play Valorant. But sadly, there's one thing I can't outfrag, and that's my asthma. And my gay thoughts. <laughs> If you've been around the channel, you may remember a video titled Gaming's Greatest Scam, where we talked about the gaming chair. And after that, I had to talk about gaming foam, thinking that's the peak of ridiculous gaming products. Well, I guess these things come in threes, because I swear to God, in my own personal Amazon homepage, I was recommended an honest-to-God gaming inhaler. And I had to pick it up. Is this what late stage gaming looks like? I swear in this day and age, you gotta have your $3,000 gaming PC, a Fisher Price chair, RGB microphone, and of course your trusty gaming inhaler just to go 9 and 20 and Black Ops 7. I, I, what comes after this? Gaming antidepressants? What's up guys? Welcome back. Don't forget to use code MANLY for my epic 10% discount for my unethical Razer antidepressants. Now, before we test this product out IRL, we need to understand what it even does in the first place. The product claims it'll enhance your energy, reaction, alertness, focus, and mouse pad. But between the naming schemes, the lifted dark cell assets, and the clear lack of any form of amphetamines in this product, I'm starting to have my doubts. This is a mess. So by this point, I'm guessing you can probably piece together that this product is a complete scam for a variety of reasons. So let's make a list, shall we? First of all, this product claims that it has no caffeine in it whatsoever. And for a lot of people, that may be seen as a good thing. If you're a bitch. Caffeine is one of the most sacred gamer ingredients. It actively stimulates the nervous system, not only allowing you to raise your kill-death ratio, but also harass women at a much higher words per minute. Pretty badass. <laughs> bitch! Is a bitch talking to me? Is a female talking to me? Problem number two, and this one's actually important. The main ingredient in this product is menthol, and they say they use its cooling properties to increase breathing and help raise focus. But uh, that's actually not what menthol does, like at all. All menthol does is give a chilling sensation by activating the potassium and calcium channels in your nervous system, which just triggers the cold response. It might feel soothing to the touch, but it doesn't open up your nostrils at all. And not only does menthol not open your nasal passage, it can actually make it worse because it irritates the skin in the nose, causing it to clog up even more. So we're not off to a great start here. <laughs> but it gets worse. Not only does this product not energize you, if you keep taking it more and more, which we're gonna do because we're gamers, and it doesn't work, this causes a buildup of menthol in the nasal cavity, which apparently can cause lethargy, vertigo, seizures, coma, <laughs> and potentially death. To be fair, I don't think anyone's getting uninstalled because they hit their gaming inhaler a few too many times. But then again, I think like a hundred people die every year from pencils. So, I, I'm just saying. The number's probably not zero. Doctor, there's been an emergency. A man just went into a coma and he needs life support ASAP. Damn it, what's the cause? We're completely overfilled as it is. Just stabilize him with 20 cc's of low carb white monster. Already on it. It says on his chart that he boofed his gaming inhaler. I'm gonna get his vitals. God damn it, there's no time for vitals. We just need his gamer tag. And what's the frame rate on that beeping thing? It needs to be at least 144 hertz. The man's a gamer for God's sakes. But doctor, I don't know how to tell you this. We're all out of the RGB life support. Mother of God. Do we at least know his rank? The chart says that he's silver. Huh. All right, next patient. Did you just let this man die because of a rank he had in a video game? Ma'am, I understand that what you just witnessed may have felt like an inhumane act of cruelty, but I didn't pull the plug simply because of his silver rank. I pulled the plug because I knew deep down he was a gamer. And as we know, gamers don't die. They only respawn. <laughs> What if? What if this actually did have some impact on your performance? After all, maybe the only difference between a few wins and losses is just a couple whiffs of Banana Royale. So in this part of the video, we are going to scientifically test to see if a gaming inhaler will have any impact on performance, whether positive or negative. I am genuinely curious to see if turning to a life of drugs will get me out of silver. But that leaves us with the problem. How But that leaves us with the problem, and that is, how on earth do you scientifically measure the impact of a gaming inhaler? Poorly. 
And that's how we're gonna do it. Over the next three days, I'm gonna do three aim labs courses followed by a reaction time test. We'll start by doing two warm-up sets, noting those scores, and then rip the gaming inhaler, and then run the whole cycle back. The courses that I chose are all ones that I'm well acquainted with, so the progressive gains of doing these back-to-back -back should be fairly minimal. But in case they aren't, on the third day, we'll forgo the warm-up sets and simply use the gaming inhaler on the first run. There is a chance that the more you do it, the worse you actually get, so we're trying to not do that. Now, you may be thinking this is a completely inadequate science experiment and there are far too many variables that I am not accounting for. But that's because through this very clever disguise, I have somehow fooled you into thinking that I am some qualified scientist. When in reality, I'm just your average guy. Nicologist. Okay, so this is day number one. We're gonna start off by doing a baseline reaction time test and see where we're at. It's important to know that this test serves two vital functions. Not only does it gauge our response time, but it makes sure that I'm performing consistently despite changes in things like sleep and hydration, which can massively change your response time. I then use that to make sure I wasn't recording on any days where I wasn't hitting my personal averages. All right, so first score is 152. After the reaction time test, I then moved on to the three specific aim labs courses. I ran this back twice and got about the same scores. So with that said, it was time to open the gaming inhaler and give it a spin. Where did I put them? Oh my god, I can already smell them. Place inhaler inside nose and gently inhale. Oh, I'm supposed to shove this whole fucking thing up there. Oh my god. Okay, so here we go. I gotta get rid of these. Oh, you, you know those like Listerine strips? I feel like I just like crammed one of those up my nose. <laughs> All right, let's get the test going. First with reaction time. Now, as someone who gets a stuffy nose at the mere thought of touching grass, I was pretty surprised by the results of the test given that my nose was running and I was sneezing half the time. I must've been having a pretty good run. Let's hit it just one more time just to make sure it's working. It never was supposed to be. Why is it possible? As much as I hate to say it, my last two scores were higher than the original, but looking back on my first day averages, they were all lower compared to the second and third days. And I think it's just because I was getting used to recording and doing aim labs at the same time. So there was a lot of technical stuff that had to be sorted out. Normally I'd show that right here, but it was honestly boring as fuck to watch. We're just gonna skip to the third day where we switch the flavor around and the order of the tests. Okay, so we're back here on the third day. We're gonna start out the gate just ripping both of these right now, and then we'll tally it all up at the end here. Fuck it, let's throw some banana royale in there. Turns out doubling the gaming inhaler also more than doubles your score. And I want to put this. I did it! Retrying with just one inhaler, I got a 172 as opposed to the 161 I got without it. Oh god. The banana one smells like car sickness. Swapping out banana mint for tryhard tropical. Oh shit. Oh, that's not good. <coughs> <coughs> oh. By the time I was feeling literally sick by the banana mint smell, I ended up trying out Tryhard Tropical, but the bottom of the case snapped off and the little sponge that contains the condensed to essence of smell. That thing overpowered the fuck out of the room. And some combination between that and the banana mint made me want to throw up. I had to stop everything I was doing, aerate the room, and from that point on, I only used the winter mint and the cinnamon run sticks to complete the tests. Speaking of which, here are the scores from the day three inhaler tests. And here are the control scores I recorded right after. To our great surprise, it turns out that I am significantly worse when I use the gaming inhaler. And if my tenuous grasp on basic algebra holds up, all of these percentages added up together mean on average I am negative 5.75% worse on the gaming inhaler. I did not feel any change in my energy, my focus was fucking obliterated, my reaction time was just straight up worse, and my alertness... I don't even know how you gauge that. And just for the nerds out there, I typically play at like 400 DPI at a very low sense, so uh, maybe that makes some impact if you're like some super twitchy guy. I'm more with the CSGO crowd with the super low sensitivities, like 360 no-scopes look like. If you want your lovely name written on the wall and a bunch of extra cool perks, Patreon's link below, free Discord, all that stuff. Um, yeah, see you guys next time.